Hey, my name is Byron Q, and I'm here to talk about how I made Killing of a Machine using virtual production and Unreal Engine. So the origin of this story came to me about two and a half years ago because I had this crazy idea about AI taking over. Who would have thought? Yeah, I reached out to some production companies based in Iceland and they told me, don't even bother coming out here unless you have $100,000 for a budget. And that was based off of the short script, which is seven pages. I kind of gave up my hopes to actually make this film once I heard that. That's until I came across Unreal Engine. I first went on YouTube and watched countless hours of YouTube tutorials, but I realized that my MacBook Pro wasn't gonna handle Unreal Engine. I went out and bought a PC from Puget Systems. As I got you know, more advanced in just like learning the tools and how to use it, I realized that this tool was a little bit more complicated than I had originally thought. I took a class with CG Pro, they're an online school, and they were able to do live instructions. And I was able to meet a cohort of other students who were equally as passionate about virtual production and what it means for filmmaking. The first key tip I would give anybody learning Unreal Engine, you should have your own personal project to work towards. By having a personal project, you're able to push yourself and motivate yourself because there's a purpose to like why you're learning how to use or how to do a certain effect. Coming out of class, I was able to create this environment. And from there, I began searching for LED studios that would be affordable within my budget, which was, by the way, zero. I finally found an indie studio. They're creators and artists themselves. They produce and direct films. And I've actually known the owner, Ace Underhill, for over 10 years when he first rented a grip truck to me. So once I got my Kickstarter campaign going and I was actually able to successfully raise some funds, the next step was to actually go and get the crew. I needed people who understood virtual production. The problem was that this was all brand new to everybody. So there weren't really that many people that I could reach out to. All the people who knew about this stuff, they were already working on big shows. However, because I took CG Pro class, I was able to meet a lot of people who were professionals, who were filmmakers, who had already been learning at the same pace as I was. We all understood that we were all learning a new thing together and that it was an exciting project. And that's the other tip I would give people is find your tribe, you know, really get people excited around your project. The first people that you're gonna be pitching to are the people that you're gonna bring on board to help you, not investors. At Brilliant Screen Studios, during our first shoot, we did a hybrid of green screen and LED. That actually worked to our advantage in many ways. Because my environment wasn't that dope looking <laughs> from the beginning, um, I was able to still continuously work on my environment and later we replaced that green with a much better environment. If I had shot on an LED on those first two days, um, any changes or adjustments, that would have been impossible to do because it would have been in-camera VFX. We had a lot of challenges and because of these challenges, we realized that to keep pushing, we would have sacrificed quality of what we were already getting. So we made the hard decision to say, hey, you know what? We're gonna have to um, plan for a pickup day later down the line and get some more financing and use the footage that we shot already to get additional financing. After we shot those two days, there was a long, arduous journey of figuring out what that post pipeline was gonna be like. That was the biggest challenge for me because I don't come from a VFX background and I had to learn everything as I went. And it took a lot of talking to different people, trying different things, After Effects, Cinema 4D, Maya, Blender. Every step of the way was a learning process. After about a year of this VFX hell, I was able to finally figure out how we were gonna do all of this. And I realized that if I waited any longer, the film wouldn't be completed. We went back to Brilliant Screen Studios and we finished filming Killing of a Machine. We brought the old costumes back, brought the old team back as well, mixed with some new people. 
Brilliant Screen Studios had upgraded their wall. The wall was much bigger. They removed the LED panel that they initially had, which was quite small and didn't really give too much coverage. We were able to really go in and build out an actual skylight over the LED wall. The increase in the wall height also allowed us more room to play around with in terms of the camera angles. We were much more prepared this time. We started with our actors coming in, getting into makeup immediately. We knew that that would take some time, especially for David Quinn, who plays the droid. As you can see here, we're setting up the practical set pieces to really blend the wall with the set. Fernanda, the art director, was able to come in and lay out the snow and, and really blend the seam between the practical set and the wall. I remember there was a moment when we were looking at the monitor and we're like, wait, is it right there? No, wait, it's right there. And that's when we knew that, hey, we had achieved something pretty cool. Some tips I would give to really sell the environment, always use a little bit of haze. Um, it just creates a little bit of atmosphere and kind of you know softens up the look of the digital wall. Another thing I would recommend is having a little bit of wind, right? Like we had fans going or people fanning the actors to give a little bit of a effect on his fur coat. As you can see here, we're throwing snow onto our actor. Uh, all these little details really sells the realism of the scene. So one thing we tried on this pickup shoot was real-time motion capture. So I actually brought out my Rococo suit, as you can see right here. And we try to, you know, put some performers and have them animate like a, a CGI character that was going to be on the wall. In the end, we decided to scrap that idea due to the space of the studio and just like the real time aspect of it. I think, you know, as the technology develops a little bit more, um, there will be many use cases of like real time motion capture on LED wall. ran through six different setups. And with each one, we had to make adjustments to um, the wall as well as the practical set to kind of sell that angle. The results that we got was just phenomenal. Check out the still. And this is just straight out of the camera. Like we put a LED over it as a basic color correction. Um, it's seamless, and this is what I was so excited about. This is why I got into virtual production. That's the wrap. From that, huge success. Can't wait to show you guys the end product. Hey, so if this stuff is interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as add me on social media. I'm gonna be posting a lot of uh, content out there that's gonna help filmmakers and help other artists to learn and develop their craft.